Hello friend, welcome to another episode of the Mount Rushmore of everything. Today, we are diving in and talking about the Mount Rushmore of NFL quarterbacks. Sam, give us the first one. Tom Brady. I agree. Yep, there's no question. I mean, he is a GOAT, so... I don't agree <laughs> on the no GOAT question. thing. I don't there's agree no on the question. GOAT thing. There's always going to be questions. That's what this is about anyways. But, yes. but I, I do agree it's a non-negotiable oh, yeah. in the Mount Rushmore. Because no matter what, like, even though I disagree with the common thought that he is the GOAT, I understand why he has a very good argument for being the GOAT. I just don't think that it's as clear as people make it out to be. But just being the person that people have mostly said was for the past five, six years, and then for how important he has been to football in general... He has to be on mm-hmm. there. As if it needs to be said. Second in all-time yards. First in all-time playoff yards. Third in all-time touchdowns. Second most fourth quarter comebacks. Next to somebody else who's going to be on my list. Tied for the most Pro Bowls. Second most MVPs in NFL history. And the second greatest quarterback according to adjusted value. Which adjusted value is basically they take into account how good your teams were and they figured out your actual value to your team. So, for example, if you had a great team, it's going to bring you down a peg. If you did, if you elevated a team that was kind of meh without you, they're going to yeah. compensate for that. And he wears Ugg boots and he doesn't care. That is true. That's pretty legendary. I mean, to be I'll in the NFL, that. a quarterback, multiple Super Bowl. And to not Super be Bowl. ashamed of wearing those. Yeah, yeah that's... Yeah. Just saying. All right. All right, my next next one, one. and you're probably going to be very happy about this, because I know, I know. I know that you agree already. Uh, Peyton Manning. Can't have the list without Peyton. Most MVPs with five, which is two more than the next person, which is Tom Brady. (laughs) He also was the top in yards and touchdowns and all those things for a while, and it took... Drew Brees, a couple more years to pass him in some of those things. It took Tom Brady two more years of being in the NFL to pass that, not to mention the league is much more pass-heavy now than it was when Peyton was playing and Brady wasn't. Most prolific passer probably in NFL history in a lot of different ways. And number one in that adjusted value mark that I mentioned before, he also was the only player to win a Super Bowl as a starting quarterback for two different teams. He's also the only quarterback to go to a Super Bowl with four different head coaches. Third in all-time touchdowns. There's no question to his greatness because he's had to be great with a bunch of different teams, um, players, and then literally two different franchises. All along with the fact that he also changed the NFL. The NFL was very much a quarterbacks didn't call their own plays, but he's the one that came in, ran his own offense, called his own plays in the huddle, and he sort of changed the league towards now. It's a little bit more the quarterbacks more involved with it. Lucas Oil Stadium, referred to as the house that Peyton built and the most fourth quarter comebacks of all time, still. Even with Tom Brady now playing four more seasons and other greats like Drew Brees and stuff playing two or three more seasons. Also tied for most Pro Bowls with Tom Brady. Those are both non-negotiable to me, for sure. Sam. What? Was he on your list? Yeah. Non-negotiable? Yeah. Absolutely non-negotiable. Next one. My last non-negotiable is the person that, before Peyton and Brady, was largely just considered the GOAT. There is a reason for that. The four Super Bowls was the record for a while. This person is easily the third or fourth most recognizable name in the NFL. Uh I think it has to be, in my opinion, Joe Montana. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys consider him non-negotiable? I I do consider him non-negotiable. Okay. And you do. Yeah, and I think a lot of people consider him the second greatest or even better than Brady. I know that they do. I just hate it so much because <laughs> I, I, know, I know the only reason is because they measure Super Bowls too highly. But my issue with that is if you say it's all about Super Bowls, then by that logic, you have to think Teddy Bradshaw is tied as the second greatest quarterback of all time, and no self-respecting person puts him even in the top 10, mm. and even top 20 is a stretch. And then you have to have people like Dan Marino, no Super oh, Bowl wins. Yeah. Don't think it's relevant. And if you argue by Super Bowl wins, you have to stay consistent, and nobody stays consistent with that. It's just, like, convenient to use it for Brady and convenient to use it to Montana. But then after that, it breaks down, and it's so obvious that it's Super Bowls do not measure a quarterback. And it's a horrible measurement, but people do it anyway. 
So I hate that logic. But yes, I agree that it is a common... It's a common one-two with him and yeah. Brady, even though I, I don't... I think he's three at best. 20th in all-time yards, pretty pretty decent, four Super Bowls, probably the most recognizable retired quarterback name is what I keep coming back to. Like, hmm. if, you were, if I were to tell the average person name a retired quarterback, not Peyton, because yes, I know he retired five years ago, but when I say retired, I mean like pre-2000s mm-hmm. quarterbacks. I assume Joe Montana would be the first one for most people to throw out there. Also tied for third most MVPs, which is second all-time, tied with Brady and another person that will be mentioned later in this video. Okay. All right. I'm going to go with my last one. I'm very curious on this. Go ahead. Well, you mentioned him already, but still, I consider him a non-negotiable, too. So you have all four non-negotiable? Yeah. Wow. I cannot even imagine, but okay. Then, Daniel Constantine Marino. Really? Yes. Okay. Sam, is he on your four? Yeah. (laughs) His man! (laughs) No, no. I'm just Admi- my, admittedly isn't surprising kind of to me. Here, a here's the bit. thing, and and this one, he was actually the first one that I picked. That I said, yes, that's going to be my non-negotiable because I knew that I was going to have Tom Brady, and I knew that I was going to have Peyton for sure. And before I started researching and stuff, I said they are probably going to be there. It's an obvious pick for me. Interesting. I I went first, Dan Marino, and then Joe Montana. Just because of legacy, I think, and name recognition and association with the NFL. I was never a a NFL fan, but back in Mexico, I knew who Dan Marino was without knowing anyone. That was the only player in the whole NFL that I I knew who who he was, what he looked like, and and who he played for. I think he's in the discussion, but... But for me, it was two battling it out for this spot. Mm-hmm. He was not one of those two, but I would put him right south of that. Mm-hmm. He accomplished so many things well before its time. Mm-hmm. Like his record of how many touchdown passes in a season stood for so long until Peyton broke it. He is one of the most underappreciated quarterbacks ever, and he also is a legendary name. I don't think I can put. I would put him over Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, or Drew Brees. I would put him over at least two of the three of those. So this is the fun three. part for me, because now I can just sit back and then see how this so, unfolds. So, all right. In my opinion, the three main ones in the discussion for this fourth spot are Dan Marino, John Elway, and Johnny Unitas. I think on legacy and well-knownness, the Dan Marino thing surprised me, because I would have thought John Elway. Uh-huh. Because he was such a big deal, and so many like iconic moments are him. Like the drive is like a you know anytime, like top five, top ten, like NFL playoff moments. Like that's it, right? And then the drive two, and then obviously the Super Bowl victories as well. And then Johnny Unitas to me is that old school obvious pick. The big question to me is Johnny Unitas was great for his time. And was very important. Here's my thing. Johnny Unitas is really close to feeling like a dark horse. Because if you're if you're an NFL fan like me, you probably, if you've spent any time, like, you know Johnny Unitas. If you look up top five quarterbacks, he's usually in that top five. He's the only true old school one that's in there. But I feel like your average non-NFL person has never heard of him when they have heard of John Elway and Dan Marino. So I went back and forth. I spent most of my time between John Elway and Johnny Unitas. I think I'm going to go with Johnny Unitas. Don't feel great about it. Kind of want to go John Elway. You know, I, as a Broncos fan, I feel really dirty because I feel like John Elway deserves it. And I almost feel like I'm punishing him for being a Broncos <laughs> fan because I don't want to be accused of bias. But Unitas did so many important things for the NFL long before. I mean, he's even pre-Super Bowl era, which mm-hmm. is why it's like, oh, man. Right. To pick somebody in there that's not Super Bowl era, but he's also kind of your George Washington. Yeah, sense, that's so what it's I was going to say. Weird. That's the nature of, of Mount Rushmore of everything. If there is someone, like in this case, someone who has transcended that limitation. Yes. Yeah. Then they, they, I think they deserve it. Sam, what was your fourth, your fourth. apparently unpopular pick? That is so, clearly not one that's been mentioned. Basically, with all the Mount Rushmores I've been on, I like to change 10 to pick people who have revolutionized it. So... Very fair. I pick Michael Vick. Without him, some of the past first-round quarterbacks in, like, the past, I don't know, five years 
wouldn't have been picked, there'd be some people who are pocket passers who would have been picked higher. But since every quarterback now needs to have some sort of mobility, yep. Because of Michael Vick, that's why I picked him. Almost all the quarterbacks in like the twenty eighteen draft, they were picked because they were mobile. And that's why I picked him. Let us know what you think. Drop a comment. Down below, we will be sure to respond to it. And if you make a good enough argument for your for or against something we pick, we're going to discuss it in the live streams that we do because we want to keep the conversation going. Be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe and click the notification bell if you want to be notified when new videos come out, which they are out every single Thursday, talking about the Mount Rushmore of everything. We appreciate you, and we will talk to you next time. I had to go with, for my first one, the greatest football player of all time, Nathan Peterman. I agree. What? And I just feel bad as a Broncos fan that I didn't <laughs> pick John Elway. It feels so gross to me that no John Elway was represented, though. Mm. Sorry, John.